Okay, hi, my name is Jessica Lopez and I will be your instructor for this class. I just kind of wanted to go over with you how things are going to work and what you should be doing um, this first week. This is kind of a condensed class. So it's essentially two classes in one semester. So normally in a regular semester, we would just concentrate on orientation and then the following week we would start with material. However, since you're doing two courses in one semester, we essentially are doing like a flex one and a flex two. So the first eight weeks we concentrate on one course and then the second eight weeks we concentrate on the second course. Um, what that means is that we essentially have to do two weeks, two weeks worth of work this, um, this week, the first week of the semester. So I kind of, it's a lot of information, but I'm going to share my screen with you so that you can, um, I can guide you through everything that you need to get done. Okay. Now you'll have to excuse me because I do not recall. Um, what I had on my screen last. So let's see here. So you do have to log into ACES. If you're not sure how to log into ACES, um, oh, I must have done something here. Oops. So to log into ACES, you will want to just go to alamo.edu and then you will click on um, log into ACES here on the top right. And then it's gonna ask you for your credentials for you to log in. If you for some reason cannot log in, um, you can call the phone number. It is 210-486-2777. And that is the help desk. And they can help you reset your password if you're having trouble getting into ACEs. Uh, once you're in ACEs, you should see what I'm seeing here or something of this nature. Okay, now what you want to click on is the Canvas icon. This is where our class lives, and this is where you'll go for course content, at least for this week, um, for orientation. This will also be where your gradebook is held. However, most of your uh, coursework is going to be in an external website, okay? So you're going to be using, um, a website and in that website will be all of the objectives and the work that you're going to work on. Um, Canvas is just kind of where I'm going to house everything and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So one thing I need you to understand is that you are enrolled in two classes, 0320 which is intermediate algebra and 1414 which is um, college algebra and if you notice this is on my end. I have not published the 1414 course because I don't have anything in there yet since you do not need to do orientation twice. You won't need to do one orientation for 320 and then another one for 1414. So the orientation that you go through for 320 at the beginning will cover both, okay? Um, and so there's, I'm not really gonna release anything in 1414 until either one, we hit week eight, because then after that, you're supposed to start on 1414. Or two, if someone finishes early, then I'll have to open up 1414 for them, okay? But again, like I have explained, mostly everything is going to be housed outside of Canvas for this class. The only thing that's really going to be in here is our gradebook and the orientation. So I'm going to look for Math 0320, which is you guys, section 165. And in here, it has the whole orientation, okay? Now, um, I don't have anything else in here other than the orientation. I'm going to go through with you how to walk through this. And then once we walk through this, I'm going to um, show you what that other website looks like. Okay, so that you can kind of see it and you'll know how to navigate through it. Um, so let me see, student view. So everything in your orientation is locked down. 
Notice how everything is grayed out and the only thing you can see is the very first item that there is to do. Now, I am not gonna have the time in this quick orientation video um, to cover going through every single step. However, I will want, do want to point out that it tells you what you need to do to meet the requirements so that the next item will unlock, okay? So notice that the first item is the first item. So of course it's automatically unlocked and it's telling me that I have to view this page in order for the next one to be unlocked. Now I'll do it just because viewing it is not gonna be that difficult or time consuming for me to do. So this just says, hi, this is who I am. This is my office hours. Um, and this is how you're going to navigate through the class, okay? Everything does have to be done in order. Um, and then you're just gonna basically be clicking this next button as you go through your orientation. If for some reason you need to stop in the middle of completing your orientation, then um, I'll explain to you how to navigate back, okay? So this is a second item that was in the orientation and it's telling me how to update my personal settings inside Canvas. And this you'll want to do just because if I send out an announcement or if I send out an email, you'll be notified um, through your email on your phone or through a phone number, whatever you have um, connected to Canvas, okay? So let's say I'm done. I, I want to get out of here. All you need to have to, all you have to do is click on home and it'll take you right back to your orientation. Now notice, I've already viewed the first item and I even viewed the second item. Now I haven't completed the second item. I highly suggest that you complete that second item before moving on. Um, but there's no way for me to check to see if you changed your settings or if you set them in a certain way. I apologize for this document camera. I didn't realize it was sticking there. Um, but I can't, I can't check that or verify that. So the only thing I can, requirement I can put on that is that you actually view that that file okay um, the next thing is a quiz and so notice that it's worth one point I believe it's just one giant question um, with a bunch of different parts so you have to get that one question correct and all of the parts correct um, now I don't mean to be rude but I do have to be very clear when I write things and I type things um, however, I have been misunderstood in the past as being, um, I guess, too blunt. I'm not sure what the complaint is exactly, but I am trying to um, be very upfront, okay? So I want to set my expectations upfront. I want you to be aware of what I expect, right? And I need that to be clear and concise for you as you're going through this. Um, so right here, it might sound a little stern when you're reading through this. Um, I'm not trying to be mean. I am very nice and very helpful. Um, but it might sound a little bit like that as you read this. Um, so try to uh, hear me in my nice voice when you read this information. Um, don't try to listen, um, create a whole nother voice for me that is not so nice. Um, but it says, if you do not get 100% on this quiz the first time, it is evident that you are not reading everything thoroughly. This is literally going to be a problem where I give you a paragraph and then I'm actually asking you for snippets of that paragraph. So if you didn't read through the paragraph, that's really the only way you cannot get the snippets correct, okay? Um, so that's why I make that statement. Like it should be a very easy assignment to do but if you're just trying to rush through it or trying to skim through it and you're not reading everything thoroughly, this will become apparent in just this first quiz, okay? And that's one thing that's gonna be very, very, very crucial to your success as you go through this kind of course is that reading and understanding what you're reading is super important, okay? Everything is on the computer. So everything you're reading, um, so it is very important that you're able to read and comprehend uh, what it is that you're that you're viewing. Okay, so that's why I really have this in here. It's I mean, yes, I want to go over the netiquette and ground rules of discussions. You know, I don't want people typing in all caps unless you know, I did type all caps on first and everything smart because uh, that's an acronym. But um, 
just not all calves have, uh, you know, I know we get excited and stuff, but it's just going over some ground rules and etiquette. So make sure you read through that and then try it. You do get three attempts to do it. So if you do mess up the first time because you were rushing through it, um, you do get two more attempts to try to get it done. Um, but after those three attempts, I mean, it's really hard for me to say it. <laughs> and it sounds, you know, it comes off a little rude. But if you're having that, diff that level of difficulty with reading and then selecting snippets inside the, the, the selection, and it takes you more than three attempts to get this problem correct, I mean, it's not like once you answer, it's locked in. I mean, you can go back and forth and back and forth between the passage and the question and make sure you have everything correct before you actually submit it. So there's really no justification for why someone would not be able to get this problem correct after three tries of it, okay? The only reason you'd be doing that is because you're being absent-minded or you're rushing or you're just truly not taking the assignment seriously. Um, and if that is the case, if you're doing any one of those things, you're honestly not going to be successful in this kind of course. So this is really like, this is one of many assignments that are kind of setting the barrier and setting the standard for what I expect in the class, okay? And so once that third attempt passes and you still have not been able to answer the question correctly, unfortunately, you're going to be at a deadlock. You will not be able to continue the rest of the course because in order to unlock the next item, this has to be answered correctly, okay? So I just want to stress how important it is that you make sure you take your time through that assignment and don't try to rush through it. You really honestly need to take every single item seriously on this um, orientation. So don't try to just rush through it and just get it done. It's not going to work in your favor, okay? Um, really, really read through everything and make sure you comprehend everything that's being said and you really have an understanding. Um, then you'll get to the welcome and in the welcome, it's actually a discussion. So it will ask you, I think, to say something like your name, your major, and then like some fun facts about yourself. Okay, well, my name is Jessica Lopez, right? And my major was, of course, math mathematics and for both my bachelor's and my master's. And um, fun facts about me, I don't know. I like rock concerts, maybe. I think I mentioned a little bit of this in my story, which is like the very last thing in the orientation. Um, so that's pretty much um, what you're gonna be asked to do in that particular discussion. But there is some preliminary information in there before it asks you to respond to the discussion. So make sure you read through all of that information, okay? The next thing is an attendance notification. Now this item is important because remember, we have two classes together. However, even though both classes are 16 weeks, essentially what it's doing is it's giving me that both of this amount of time for this class and this amount of time for this class together, right? Every day with you um, so that you have more time in with me working on this content. So instead of just having 320 for eight weeks and just having 1414 for eight weeks, instead you have them both for 16 weeks. Well, your 320 class is a three hour course, which means we should be working on stuff for three hours a week. Your 1414 class is a four hour course, which means you should be working on material for four hours a week. So you put those two together, that means we should be working on our material for this with me, right? All, everything that you're gonna do with me um, in this program called Alex is going to, you need to commit seven hours a week on this information. That is just based on if we were in a face-to-face -face class, that's exactly how many hours per week you'd be spending in the classroom with me, okay? Um, and so that, that time is going to be very, very crucial for you to get everything you need to get done complete, okay? Um, there is an ORLN course that you also have to do. Anyone that takes an online class has to do this. Now, I know some of you were originally in the remote class and wouldn't have had to do this, but because um, one was going to get canceled, 
I, I, I just went ahead and called you guys and asked you to migrate over to the online one. Um, now you're going to be responsible for doing this online orientation. I mean, and it's pretty simple, but um, you do have to complete it. So how would you find that? What you would do is you would click over here on your dashboard. Now I'm going to click it and then I'll come back here. Um, you go to your dashboard and in your dashboard, just like I have all these math classes, right, that I'm teaching, you should have one that says ORLN. If you don't, let me know, email me, okay, right away. If you don't have um, an ORLN course over here in your dashboard in Canvas, um, because we, you need to get registered for one, we need to be put in there, okay? Um, if you don't know my email, if you go back to the getting started and the welcome, my email information is on there. It does say jlopez at alamo.edu. You could also go to the left navigation bar in on Canvas and you see that there's a Canvas inbox and you can message me from there as well. Um, however, I do prefer that students text me um, just because I know that, that, that people generally text back and forth with each other versus like phone calls nowadays or emails. So it really does help as far as that is concerned. Um, but also it's a way to immediately get feedback. Um, unless I am, of course, working with another student, then I can't you know, respond as quickly as possible. But I do use text, uh, texting with, through an app called Remind. Now, you'll see that later in the orientation. Um, so any of the items before you sign up for Remind, you'll want to email me about if you get stuck or anything like that. Anything after you've set up with Remind, I would highly suggest that you text me whatever it is that you're having trouble with um, or whatever it is that you want to tell me, just because that's going to be your best bet on getting um, a quicker response. Okay, so that's the Canvas overview. If you've already finished the overview, then this assignment would have already been marked complete and you should already be able to go on to the BioSig enrollment. This is how you, um, when you do the ORLN, you should be setting up a bio signature. And so then that this is just basically verifying that it's you and not somebody else. Then the SPC student commitment form, you'll read through that and then just say, yes, I acknowledge and all of this and that. Um, and then the next thing is that student setting up for Remind. So it talks about, let me go to preview. I do try to use videos as much as possible. I know there's not videos for everything, but I do, I mean, it practically is, but <laughs> I try to use the videos as much as possible. So here I do have a video to explain to you what Remind is. And then all you literally do is click join and make sure you type in your cell phone number because that's the faster way for us to communicate with each other. You don't want to sign up with your email just because that requires you to go check your email. And this, that's what I'm trying to avoid here is having to go to check email all the time when we can just text message each other back and forth. And having that third party in the middle helps with privacy issues, right? So I don't have your phone number, you don't have my cell phone number. Um, we just have this communication through this third party. Okay, and that's what I like about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out of there and go back to, where was I? So then you have another quiz. It's gonna explain to you what kind of equipment you need to have in this class, and then you'll let me know what you have. Um, you do need to have a webcam in this class, and you, do, you cannot use a Chromebook or a Surface tablet. Um, those will not allow you to download what is called Respondus Monitor and Lockdown Browser. So um, when you click on these, it'll allow you to go through a systems uh, requirement check and make sure that whatever device you're using for this online class will allow you to use a Respondus Monitor, okay? Um, then you have the syllabus, acknowledgement, and questions, and this is also one of those super huge important things, okay? So this is your one opportunity to ask me anything that might seem concerning to you or worrisome to you on the syllabus, okay? So if there's anything in there that you need me to clarify or explain, um, you need to ask about that here. 
after that, you can't come back and say, miss, well, I think this is ridiculous that we have to do this because you agreed that you were going to do it <laughs> once you've gotten past this assignment. Okay. So make sure that you read through that correctly. It is like a contract, right? Um, you just make sure that everything in there makes sense to you. If it, you don't understand why you have to do something, ask me, I will explain it. There's a reason why everything is in there. I don't just randomly make up stuff, okay? Um, so that's the syllabus. The syllabus is already embedded in there, so you just have to go through the whole thing, okay? Make sure you read everything. It does talk about if you have a device that is not compatible with the respondents and all of that, there is some information on how to obtain a device that is compatible with it. Um, also, how to get internet hotspots on campus if you need to. So all that information is there. Um, and if you haven't, um, if you haven't gone through the orientation uh, long enough in order to get to this, you can also click course syllabus over here on the left hand side at any time. It won't take you to the quiz, it'll just take you straight to the syllabus, which you can review at any point in time. Okay. But if you're doing the assignment where I'm asking you to have that discussion with me, like if you have questions, if not, just say I understand. I give you a whole quote to say, um, then you do that. Okay. Um, then there's a readiness quiz. This is just to kind of gauge where your skill set is at before you start the class. However, there's going, and it's also a way to test whether or not your download, your respondents lockdown browser was downloaded correctly. You can use it properly. You can use your webcam properly. You learn how to scan and upload documents properly because that process is gonna be required for every single test. And you are gonna have a midterm for 320, final exam for 320, a midterm for 1414, and a final exam for 1414. You will have to repeat this whole process four times in the semester. So it's definitely good to at least have a little bit of practice during this orientation, okay? Um, the next thing is the Alex registration. I have already registered you so once you get to the Alex registration, that's when you'll send me a remind text and tell me, hey, miss, I finished the readiness quiz. I uploaded my work. I did it on time. Now I'm at the Alex registration page. So can you please give me my information? So notice that here it says you have to mark it done. Um, so you can, once you text me, keep moving on. Um, this just won't be marked complete and your orientation is not marked complete until you've gone into Alex and you've done what's called the initial knowledge check in Alex. So it's kind of like the readiness quiz, but not exactly. Um, so this uh, tells you what Alex is, how it works, um, but it doesn't tell you how it works as far as like a user. It just kind of goes over the scope of what Alex is and what it's doing, okay, and how it's an artificial intelligence program and all of that jazz, okay. So once all of this is done, that's when I will mark it complete. Excuse me. <coughs> but you do have to do all three of these items for the orientation to be considered finished, okay. You also have to view these other documents in order for it to be considered finished. So this is some information about MathWorld, which is our tutoring service at St. Phillips College. Um, the virtual MathWorld links, you can go check out um, all the Zoom um, sessions that each of the tutors have and the little links so that you can get tutoring. There's also BrainFuse, but I think BrainFuse is limited to the number of hours you can actually use it. Whereas MathWorld, there's no limit. As long as someone's available, you can jump in and ask for help. Um, SBC resources is just a general list of resources. I think multiple times in the syllabus, it refers to the disability services. So if you're uh, needing accommodations like extra time on test or the calculator, everybody gets to use the calculator on the test. The having the note sheet during the test, everybody gets to have a note sheet. Um, there is a limit as to what you can have on the note sheet. There's more, I'll give you more details about that when you get to testing. Um, but, but everybody's allowed those things. So really the only things that um, would be of significant value is if you needed an accommodation for extra time on a test. 
And then the last thing is the congratulations, you're done with the orientation thing. Here's my story. Okay. Um, we are required by the president to go through our story. I won't bore you with it here. I'll just let you read it on your own time or just skim through it. That one's not really that important as far as like the other assignments. Okay. So let me go into Alec so you can see what it looks like. So I will provide you your login credentials once you um, once you text me and you get you've gotten to that Alex registration and I will verify we'll go into canvas and make sure that you've uploaded your paperwork for the readiness quiz and you are in fact at that level where you're needing your registration um, information. So bear with me if it takes me a couple of minutes to, to go through that or if I'm helping another student it might take me an even longer couple of minutes. Um, but so let me go through this. I think I've already gone through our class. I want to go through a fresh one just so that you can see what it looks like. I'm working on one myself. Um, because, like I said, I like to use videos. So I am recording videos. Now, so far, I've only got about 15 topics. So you'll have to bear with me. Hopefully you guys will be working on this stuff on Monday and that will give me some time to get the rest of this week's recorded on Monday. Um, and then I can start recording the rest of the week stuff on Tuesday, Wednesday and the rest of the week. So that way I can have at least a couple of weeks out. I do apologize for that. Normally I have everything ready on day one, but I did get this class. My schedule was confirmed on Thursday. And that literally with all the meetings that we had to go to on Thursday and Friday, it really left me with just Saturday and Sunday to get everything done. And I'm teaching five different classes. I'm teaching intermediate algebra, college algebra for STEM majors, college algebra for non-STEM majors, which are not the same, um, pre-calculus and calculus. So everything's completely different and I'm having to scrounge up in two days to try to create five different courses um, and a lot of things have been changed, so I can't really just copy over what I had before and run with it. I really have to start fresh with everything. So this week, my goal, or this weekend, my goal was just to get everything for week one up as much as I possibly could before Monday. And then anything else that I could uh, squeeze in, I would squeeze in the rest um, on Monday for at least to have week one complete. Um, and then during the week, I will work on week two so that by the time week two rolls around, everything's good to go. And I can usually get about a week's worth of stuff done every day or two. So I should be able to have everything done, like everything done within a few weeks. Um, and so then it's just a matter of you going through it. So it's a lot of work on my part at the very beginning. Um, and then after that, it's just kind of watching you guys and maintaining everything um and it's not so so heavy as far as work is concerned so it says alex is a personalized way to learn at your own pace so i'm going to click this it says alex figures out the topics that you already know and then helps you to take the right path to success that is explained a little bit better in that video that was in that registration page so make sure you watch it because it is a pretty cool system and how it works. Um, here's your main menu. I'm going to click next. Here's the notifications. I'm going to click next. Here's what suggests you do. So the first thing it's going to ask you to do is do the tools tutorial. So I'm going to go through the tools tutorial and it just has you type this and then click clear and then click undo. Here's the next button. It's just going through all the different things and how you type in fractions, exponents, graphs, that sort of thing, everything, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and skip it just because we are not, we are a little cramped for time. Um, and I'm gonna skip the graphing tutorial. I'll let you do that and I'm gonna say continue. That was not the assignment that needed to be done for the Alex registration to be considered complete. What needed to be done is this in initial knowledge check. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the initial knowledge check. Now it says, you remember before you start, stay focused, don't get distracted. So make sure you're in an environment where you can do that. 
have your pencil and paper ready. Um, don't get help from others. This truly will not work properly if you are trying to get answers from someone or something um, outside just your brain and your calculator, okay? Speaking of calculators, I do want you to have a TI-30X Plus. Um, this is the best calculator to have just because it does fractions and decimals and square roots and all of that good stuff. Um, and no matter what you type in here, it's completely allowed to use on an exam. Whereas if you try to use a graphing calculator, by the way, graphing calculators are not allowed in this class. I need you to learn the concepts enough um, that you can perform them without the graphing calculator. If you can do them without the graphing calculator, then I know you've got it, okay? If you can only do it with the graphing calculator, chances are you have no idea what you're doing. Um, so <laughs> that is why I ask people to use a scientific calculator so that I am guaranteed that I know you know what you're doing, okay? Um, when you graph something, this is not gonna graph it. You'd have to know what you're doing in order to graph something, okay? So use a TI-30XS, nothing else, not XSA, not XS2, nothing like that. Just make sure it's XS, TI-30XS. It's in the syllabus. Um, so, it, you know, depending on how you work, it makes a difference in the number of topics that you'll complete. Now, um, this is just explaining that if that little calculator is visible, you can use the Alex calculator, but you can also use your own calculator if you have it nearby. If you want to wait to take this quiz until you have your calculator, I would strongly suggest that. So some of that stuff you will be able to use the calculator for, and it'd be unfortunate that you get them wrong because you didn't have this, this doodad with you, okay? So make sure that you have your calculator with you. This is not an expensive calculator. It is less than $20, um, depending on whether you get it from Office Depot, Office Max, Walmart, Target. They're usually, sometimes you can get one for like 13 bucks, sometimes 15 or 16. I think the most I've ever seen it is at the bookstore at St. Phillips College, which like kicks up the price, right, um, is $19.99. So it is not an expensive calculator, like the graphing calculators are like $200. Um, so it's definitely, definitely worth finding. Um, you could probably find one on Amazon. Let's just go check um, TI-30XS calculator. So you can see, seeing Walmart has 1544, that is like a whole classroom set. Um, Amazon's got it for fifteen forty four. That's not the same thing. This, this, whatever this is, is not the same thing. So do not get the thirty x two s. That's not the same. It won't do the square roots and the fractions real nice and pretty like these will. Okay. Um, now they do have these um, like apps that you could have, but you're not allowed to use like cell phones and stuff when you take tests. Um, and you will be recorded like being monitored with a video camera and I watch them. Um, so you definitely don't wanna be trying to use a cell phone. Uh, so make sure you just buy the calculator. Um, it's like the one thing you'll have to buy for this class because you'll already get access to Alex for free. Um, it's supposed to cost like a hundred and something dollars, but, um, but the school is gonna cover that for you, okay? Um, so let me start my knowledge check. And it's gonna ask me a few questions. I want it to start, or I wanted it to start at the very beginning. So I just clicked, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know for everything. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna say I have little knowledge. And so what it does is it gives me this nice little table here, okay? And it says, the shaded part is the stuff that I know. So I know some of this yellow stuff. I know some purple, some blue, and some teal over here. And then the gray stuff is the stuff that I'm going to be learning throughout the semester, okay? Um, and it breaks them up into categories. It tells you what all the little yellow, what all the colors mean. Um, but that really, um, it's just extra information, I guess. So this is my pie view. When I log in, I'm either gonna see one of two pie views. I'm either gonna see the timeline view or the pie view. Now, uh, the timeline, is pretty general because this is a self-paced course, but really it's more like a minimum pace course because I do have 
a particular uh, set of problems, not necessarily the, the problems that are due that particular time, but I do have a certain number of problems that you should be doing each week. So for week one, you should master at least 37 topics. So if I go to my Alex Pie, you see here how it has an eight in the middle of it. That means when I took the knowledge check, if I really took it, um, I got eight topics out of that um, knowledge check, okay? And so then that means in order for me to meet the first week's goal of 39 topics, I will have to learn 31 topics this week, okay? Um, and it is due on Friday. So I highly suggest that you go in on Monday, get the orientation knocked out, jump back in on Tuesday and start your um, topics, okay? Now I'm gonna go to start my path. That's how you get to your topics. And I want you to pay, pay special attention because you do want to set your parameters in here. So it says every problem is always going to start with what they call a learning page, where they give you the title of what topic you're doing, and then they have the question, and then the explanation, and then even show you how they want the answer. Okay, it always comes in that basic format. Once you feel like you understand what it is you're reading here, you can start the problem. If you don't understand what you're reading there, you have some options. You can click here to find videos on how to do this particular problem. Um, so this is solving a linear equation with several occurrences of the variable. So, That would probably be guidelines of solving the equation, but you could go through each of these videos. Now, I am going to add my own in here. So once I do that, and I, I have been recording some, but I, I just loaded them up into YouTube. I haven't gotten them in here yet. But at some point, you should be able to click on this. And when you click video, my video should also be up there. And I'll try to label them a certain way so that way um, you can identify it. Okay. And I'll send out an announcement on what naming convention I actually ended up using. I think I used like um, R.3 or 1.1 and then just the name of the topic. So you'll look for the name of this topic here, exactly the same name. I won't say lecture section, all of that. It's just 1.1, solving a linear equation with several occurrences of the variable. And if you hover over this, um, several occurrences of the variable, variables on the same side. So there's lots of topics, but this one is variables on the same side. So that will be the one that will be tied here. You could also click on the book to go over the information if you wanted to. You could click on the dictionary. You could even click on the words themselves and it opens up the dictionary and explains what those words mean if you don't know what they mean. This one does not have the calculator available for me to use, but like I said, if you've got your own, use it. Um, and then there's also the message center. This is important too, because you can message me, Miss, I don't understand the explanation. Um, do not email me that general, that does not help me. Say, I don't understand where they got line one, two, three, four, five. So I don't understand this line right here, negative four X equal to 40. I don't understand how they got that fifth line, okay? That helps me narrow in. I promise you it will take me 30 minutes to write this giant paragraph on how to solve the whole entire problem when all you needed was just one little tidbit of information to keep you going. Um, so it really helps you me to focus when you tell me exactly where you're, you're um, not understanding, okay? So what you do is you click on the message center, you make sure that my name says here, Miss Lopez, um, and then you make sure that this page is attached. So when you say, Miss, I don't understand line five, I can see line five, okay? If this is not checked, I will not know what line five you're talking about, okay? So make sure that's attached, say miss, I need help with line five, and then just send it. It will send me the email 
I have the Alex to automatically go to my work email and I have my work email automatically to go to my cell phone. So my cell phone will ring when you message me and I'll try to get in there and, and, and answer it. If you want, just as a backup plan or because you wanna get immediate assistance, I would also follow up with a text message. You could even bypass this little message center thing completely by grabbing your phone, taking a picture of it, and then texting me and remind miss, where is this coming from? Um, okay, so that is just a whole lot easier than having to go through that whole entire message system to me, okay? But that is your preference and you do have that option to use the message center or just to use your text and your photos. Um, I do find that the text and the photo business works a whole lot faster and easier for everybody, but it is still your choice. I'm looking at everything. I'm on the computer all day, all day long, so I'll see it no matter where it is, um, but just keep that in mind. So when I hit start, the way it works is you have to, this is their mastery base, okay? So what happens is, is that I need to get the problem, uh, I need to fill up all these bars. And how I do that depends on the problem. So let me do this problem real quick. So I get 12. And if I check it, notice I got it correct. So it lit up one of the green ones. Okay, now I'm gonna do it again. I get negative five. I'm gonna hit check. And it lights up two now because I got it right a second time in a row, okay? Um, if I were to get it right a third time in a row, it'll light up the last two and I'll be done. I did the problem three times, this kind of problem, this kind of topic three times and I'm done. However, let's say I get it wrong. Notice what it does. It does let me try again, but notice that it took away one of my green bars, okay? Or if I'm like, I don't understand how I could have gotten anything else other than zero. You're telling me to try again, but that's my final answer. You can always hit explain, and it says you entered, you, the answer you entered will be lost. Do you proceed to explain? I will say yes. The fact that you hit explain, or the fact that you got it wrong, both of those things, even one on it, one by themselves, okay, even just getting it wrong automatically stops the in a row action. So if I get it wrong and then I get it correct, I'm only going to get one green bar. I would have to get it correct again to light up those last two green bars. Now, if I didn't enter anything and I just hit explain, it wouldn't have removed one of my green bars. I still would have three total right now, but it would not give me two more green bars the next time I got something right because I undid that in a row success when I had to click explain, okay? So keep that in mind when, when you're doing this problem. Now, once I finish this, so let me see. I get two. So it's only gonna give me, oh, I got it wrong, oops. What did I do? Oh, I did the wrong sign, that's why. Dun, 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 dun. Oops, not two, ten, just ten. Okay, so now I'm gonna have to get it right a couple more times because I messed up. So this one, I got negative four. And then the last time I do it, I can do Hopefully that's correct. Otherwise it could be here all day, right? Um, I never tell people to waste too much time. If you're getting it right and wrong and right and wrong and right and wrong and right, and right that's frustrating, first of all. Second of all, that means you need to start asking for help. Don't waste too much time on a particular topic. Now, 
when I click let yes, it always does this every time you've mastered a topic. So once all those little bars light up, um, it tells you, yay, you're 71 topics away. The objective for week one is for this to be 40. You need to be 40, 40 topics away from reaching the first objective. You need to have mastered 39 topics, okay? So I'm gonna click continue my path. And then I want to draw your attention to something really quick. So it says, use the arrow to see other topics to work on. And it says, these cards list the easier ready to learn topics first. To select a topic, choose a card. Got it. Now I understand that this is all the stuff that Alex has said that was the easiest for me to learn. I get it. However, it may not necessarily be all within the same chapter. Okay. So it might give me something from chapter two. It might give me something from chapter one. It might give me something from chapter four, just because it's giving me all the easiest stuff of those particular chapters. That's not what I want. I want to work from the beginning, the very beginning of math in this or, uh, objective and build myself up through the chapters. So what I highly suggest you do is you click here on filters and instead of easiest, I suggest you click on pie slice, okay? Then that will help you. That will help you to have the things that you need to be working on first, first, okay? Now notice these little symbols. So this has a little diamond. It means it's a gold topic. It's one of those topics that are in the first objective that will need to be done. Um, there are four objectives for um, 320 as a whole. So for the first two weeks, you're working on the first objective. So you get about half of it done week one, and then you'll get the other half of it done in week two. Okay. And so all of these ones with diamonds, you have to do at some point within this first two weeks. But notice there's some that say lots. They have a little the little lock on it, right? Um, that means there's something else that needs to be done before this will open. Most likely it's probably problem type one. Once you do type one, type two will open. Once you do type two, type three will open and so on and so forth. Um, so keep that in mind. You, you can't do the stuff that says locked. It has to say unlocked. There's also a recommended order that you do things. Okay, so let me show you in the syllabus. Now the prerequisites will pop up when they pop up. There's like six or seven prerequisites. They're basically little baby topics that are not part of our objectives, but stuff that we need to know to be able to do our objective. So there's about six or seven prerequisite topics and they pop up whenever. So I think for the first week, the only prerequisite topic you'll probably be working on is solving equations with zero, one, or infinitely many solutions. It's the only one that I, because I've been working on my pie, um, and that's the only one that I came across while I was trying to do work on my pie for those 39 topics. That was the only one that I came across. However, it is recommended that you do these in this order. So I want to do order of operations with whole numbers and grouping symbols. So I can copy this, control C. I can go into Alex and where it says filters, I can search up here and type that in there. And it says nothing to show. Now that means I may have already mastered that particular topic. So let me go back and let me highlight this one because remember there were eight of them that i already knew how to do so and i don't know which eight they were i can go find out um let's just jump to this one that one should pop up so i typed it in there and notice look it's right there okay so try to go search them and go through them in that order just so that you're knocking out all the things that need to be done for week one. Um, the only problem is that because not all of these, how many are there? One, two, three, four, five. There's five topics that I'm not gonna get to this week, which means I'm probably gonna need to do these five topics from week two, okay? 
So you'll definitely want to get R.3 out of the way, 1.1, 1.2, and 1.6. So essentially all of chapter one topics should be finished in Alex by the end of the first week. Now the week does cut on Friday. Um, I really don't want to extend the deadline beyond Friday just because I need y'all to get in that habit of getting things done by Friday. If you need to use the weekend, you need to use the weekend like as a head start, okay? Um, the weekend shouldn't be used as time to catch up. It should be used as a head start. So we kind of just crank it out this week, Monday through Friday. And then once Saturday comes around, that's your opportunity to get a head start on week two, okay? Um, so we'll see how that plays out. But I, that is really what I am wanting to do so that when Friday comes around, if y'all are having to take tests, you can take your tests by Friday. Um, and then that gives me the weekend to kind of grade everything and an analyze everything. Um, but yes, we definitely want to finish all of chapter one on Friday. So essentially, it's basically like um, one homework assignment, two homework assignments, three, like four homework assignments in a regular typical class. So for this week one, you're having to do four homework assignments. Now, normally in a 16 week class, you only have to do two assignments per week. But big member, ours is like double time because we have to do two classes in 16 weeks. So that's why we're ending up having to do four sections, essentially, four homework sections. Um, it's just not organized like that in Alex. So you kind of have to use that search tool to make sure that you're doing them in order, okay? Um, if you want, and I highly suggest that you print this part, even if you have to copy and paste it, maybe copy and paste it into a Word document. And as you complete a topic, you master a topic, just highlight it. I think that's what I've been doing over here. See, this is me doing it, right? These are all the topics that I've worked on um, this morning. So as I was working on topics, I was able to come over here and highlight which sections I finished. And when I, once I reached the 39 topics, I stopped. And so I stopped right here at 2.1, um, just before the table for a linear equation. And I didn't continue because that was all I had to do for week one. Now you as a student, if you have the time, you have the energy and you wanna just keep cranking this stuff out, by all means you are more than capable and you are more than um, welcome to do so. So that's pretty much how Alex works. Um, if I click on the menu button over here, um, there are like review, don't waste time on review. You want to learn as much as possible, not be reviewing old stuff. Don't click on assignments. The only assignments there are the midterm, the final exam and all of that. And those have passwords on them. So you're not gonna be able to do them anyway. Do not create worksheets. You're just creating more redundant work for yourself. That's unnecessary. So you don't wanna work, you wanna do that. Um, the calendar, the calendar is pretty straightforward. I'll keep you informed with texts and emails and things like that. So you might not necessarily need that calendar. Um, gradebook, our gradebook is not in Alex. Our gradebook is going to be housed in Canvas where your orientation was. So you do not need um, to be looking at the gradebook at all. Reports are important. Reports will tell us how long we've been spending on this material. And so for this week, you want this time spent to be seven hours, right? You want to keep working in there until it's seven hours. So you have two things you got to look out for. You got to make sure that you've hit the seven hour mark so that your attendance is good for the week. And then two, so you know you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, right? If it's less than seven hours, then you're not doing, it's basically like you're not showing up for class, okay? So make sure you've got those seven hours. Do everything you can do to do those seven hours. I mean, if you're working five days a week on this stuff, it's like an hour and a half, less than an hour and a half, um, Monday through Friday. If you're only gonna work on it three, four days a week, then it's like an hour and 45 minutes for four days a week, okay? If you're gonna work on it three days a week, then you're getting into like two and a third, two hours and 20 minutes. Um, three days a week. So it's not a whole lot of time. And hopefully, because that's the other thing you got to watch out for, is that you need to make sure you meet those topics goals. Those are going to be your grades. So if I'm telling you, you need to have 39 topics mastered, 
and you don't have 39 topics mastered by the end of Friday, it's going to start affecting your grade. So let's say, for instance, I'm working wrong thing. I don't know what I was clicking on. Um, let's say I only get to do 25 topics out of 39. That means my grade for week one is going to be a 64.1. That's not okay. That's below average, right? If I get 30 topics out of 39 mastered, my grade will be a 76.9, okay, which is average. That's okay. And then if I get like 39 out of 39, then of course I'm going to get 100. And if you have any more than 39, your grade will still get recorded as 100. It doesn't go extra over 100, but you already have a head start on the next week, okay? So that's how your weekly grades will be calculated. However, I'm letting you know that if your hours are not seven each week, you're not putting enough time into this stuff. Um, I don't necessarily drop anyone because of the amount of time that they're putting in there, but I do take it into consideration, especially when someone comes to me last minute and is like, hey, miss, I'm not gonna get this done. Can you extend it for me? And then I go look at your time and you've only done four hours the last three weeks. No, you've had three weeks to do it and all you've done is four hours, right? That's what I use that information for. So data is data, and I do use that data um, to make decisions. So make sure you're doing your job and getting those seven hours in, okay? Um, if you notice back at the syllabus, I have to do my job, right? And just for this class alone, I have to be available two hours Monday through Friday. That's 10 hours that I have to be available to you. Uh, or no, I'm sorry. 6.30 to 8 p.m. So that's one and a half hours times five days a week. That's seven and a half hours. So I'm putting in as much time as you are, just a tiny bit more, uh, half an hour more, just for this class. But then I'm also available extra uh, general office hours, from, which is, means I answer questions for all my classes. Um, during 6.30 to 8 p.m., if I get messages from other classes, I don't answer those during that time. That's the time that I'm specifically focused on your classes, um, sending y'all announcements, sending you emails, asking you, hey, what are you doing? You haven't made no progress. You know, hey, you're doing great. Whatever the situation may be, that's the time where I focus on you. And then the general office hours is where I'm responding to anyone's emails or texts, okay? So I have time carved out, but it's pretty general. Just whoever texts me, they come, I answer them in the order I receive them. Okay, um, I know this is a lot of information and I apologize and I know this video is taking quite some time. Let me stop sharing here. Um, but I am excited. I'm excited to have you guys in my class. I am um, excited that you guys are going to start with me. I know you guys can get through this. I'll be here along the way. I will be posting more videos just to let you know where things are. Um, I know this was an hour long video. It's pretty lengthy, but I really hope that you watch it and you've watched it till the end so that you can get everything that you need to get a good start on this semester. Just think of it as a class period, right? We've been in class for an hour and that's what we've been doing this whole time. So good luck to you guys. Um, keep messaging me and I'll be here for you. You guys have a good week.